Hey everybody, Brian here with Whole Lots I Love. Uh, got Zach with me right now. Hey uh, everyone. What we're going to go over in this live stream is single dosing grinders. With us today we have the Mignon, the Eureka Mignon Oro SD, the Chiado E5 SD, and the Chiado E37 SD. Three great options that we sell here at Whole Latte Love. Uh, some of my favorite uh, single dosing grinders that we have. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I, I mean, I, what we're going to do is we're going to pull a shot, uh, grind, pull a shot on our, our Profitech Pro 600 Quick Steam Plus over here. Right behind. Uh, and then at the, after we do all that, we're going to use one of my favorite uh, manual brewing techniques, the Chiado Hoop with the old E37 SD here. And so yeah. that'll be fun too. Yeah, and, and really so dive into the main differences be, be to, between right. all these grinders right. too. And, and kind of, you know, who's, who's the market for each one of these grinders? Yeah, who's our audience? Right. So. And so, awesome. you know, I say we just get into it, honestly. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. let's get grinding. Uh, why would you choose to do single dosing, Zach? So a lot of that has to do with maybe coffee waste. You're starting to upgrade your game into different kinds of coffees. You want to store them a little bit better than, than a large hopper. Uh, or you want a better retention as well, so you're not wasting as much coffee through that. So as we dose with much, uh, many of these grinders, uh, you do need a scale for this. Uh, yeah. As you can see, Brian over here is uh, weighing out our coffee beforehand, before our, then actually Our crema dosing. wave coffee. Our crema wave coffee. For our espresso. Yep, exactly. And there is a, a little bit of a technique behind this. So uh, we are using a little bit of water as well to also lower that retention. And when we mention retention, which we'll re mention that quite a bit here, uh, retention is really just how much of that coffee that we're weighing out beforehand are we getting out with our grind? So this is really important factor when looking at single doses because we want to get as close to that number that we're weighing out uh, in our grind out as well. Uh, yeah. Well, we got. I did dose a little heavy just in case because I, you know, even though. I trust I trust the retention on these. I always anticipate it being a little off, and I don't know why I do that. And that's something that we kind of get to know our grinder over time as well. Right. So maybe with this Eureka, you might uh, you know dose a little high, mm -hmm. uh, just so you can uh, get closer to that. Uh, gram right on the point, right on that 18 that we're shooting for right. every time. So maybe the retention with this is maybe a plus seven or some, right. uh, plus 0.7 right. grams. Oh, so yeah, it's but, very, but very low. Much, you know, and, and much lower most of the time, honestly. Mm -hmm. And so I got you your gram. Let's, let's get working on that. Uh, and I do want to mention real quick because I forgot to mention it off the top. We've got Mark and Ellie back there. If you guys got any questions, throw them in the chat. My God, me and Zach would love to, to field some questions about these grinders. Mm -hmm. uh, we are very passionate about each one of these items. And so we've spent a lot of time with them. And single dosing is uh, something that we do prefer too. So. Right. I exclusively single dose at home uh, because for me, I, you know, I'm not running a cafe. So I don't have to pull shot after shot after shot. I have the time to spend with each shot and really kind of like put my work into it and get out of it what I want. Gotcha. And I see you're about to... So there is a main difference between these grinders right away within the puck preparation. So right. maybe with this Eureka, you might find a little bit of the clumping. So mm -hmm. we do need to put through a little more puck preparation as a main difference between these grinders. For so sure. we're gonna use a WDT tool. Uh, just kind of break out those clumps within here. Right, sometimes referred to as boulders if, you, if you've ever heard somebody say yep. that before. Uh, yeah, and so you want to you want it to be as ubiquitous of a you know grind as possible before you get into it. And he's also going to use the ASO leveler, ASO leveler. You know, I'm not entirely sure of the pronunciation. A S S O. Yeah, A S S O <laughs> leveler, and All right. a vitamin tamper. Love it. And a nice level even tamp. Yeah, that looks great. Perfect. All right, so now we have our puck prepared. Uh, we'll go ahead and pull a shot. Right. And I want to check right now. Is, is there any questions yet? Yeah. Um, while you were grinding the beans, what was that pushing thing that you did as Ben? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely question. So uh, you'll, you'll notice if you look at all of these, we have uh, a, a rubber silicone bellows on top. And so really the idea of that is to uh, clear out by, by pressing 
forcing air through the grinding chamber to get as much of the retention dialed back as possible. So like if you're, you know, imagine you have a little circle. If I'm pushing air through it, whatever's in that circle is going to shoot out the bottom. And that's, that's the idea behind using bellows for single dosing. You'll see a lot of single dosing grinders that use the bellows system for, to minimize retention. And boy, howdy, that looks like a good shot. Oh, yes, it that's, does. It's almost like we dialed it in right before we came live. <laughs> and it stayed at that same dial <laughs> that, we, that we did earlier. That was, so. that was 18 in, 36 out, and 30 seconds. That's and that just looks about as, yeah. And I would serve that yeah, any cafe. As, <laughs> as, as Mark loves to say, that's buckets of crema on that. Yep. <laughs> So, Perfect, no, that's, so. That, that was a great question. I, I, I love that question because, oh, yeah, let's look at that. You know what? And, and what would it cup. be if we, we weren't drinking it, right? Yeah, true. I'll stain my mustache. Honestly, that's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Typically, the creme wave is a little bit darker for my taste. But honestly, that is a surprisingly good shot. And like maybe not surprising. No, it's not surprising. It was a perfect shot. And but kind of with the ability of, of upgrading those burrs within the right. single dosers, which you find more right. more than often, uh, they kind of put that money towards an upgrade in that burr. So right. on this one, it's the diamond inside. So you're going to see... 65 millimeter. Yep. So a better plating on that, a sharper edge to that. And right. it's going to last a lot longer. That's, that's so with that, you can get a, maybe a better dial-in process of that, yeah. maybe a little more fine-tuning that mm -hmm. you can do with that. So I would agree with that. Definitely uh, up there on the Eureka grinders. Right. So... Let's move on to the Chiado E5P. Uh, you, you've probably seen the E5 Pro or the E5P or the E6P. Very similar model. Uh, I love the little SD logo, which if you, if you get that top-down top shot, you'll, you'll even see it, it lights up. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's, I, I, there's something about that that makes me happy every time that lights up. Um, but once again, uh, bellows fed uh, and Kind big of, ring for adjusting the grind size and then kind of similar that you're kind of turning it on on the side with these side buttons so mm -hmm. very different from what we'll get to a little bit later right um, but a very nice uh, dosing cup that we get with this that kind of right. walks in in a little bit different way uh, doesn't have that same detachable base or anything right um, but still has a nice large tray for any of that back right. spray right. Uh, in case there is a lot of static friction which you'll find a lot uh, during those winter months as well but that's why we do, uh, you know, use a little bit of water, a right. little bit of spritz inside that. So. And, w and one big difference with the, the, the preparation of between this grinder, well, both of these grinders and the Eureka, uh, you can probably see from the top here, is that the, the Eureka has an actual shutter on, the, on the, the, the hopper. So you can open and close that. So as you saw me use it, you just top, toss the beans in, and then you can keep it closed and you can do everything you need to do with just one dosing cup, which does come with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but with these, there's, there's, it, the beans just go straight to the burrs. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, you need to almost have something to toss the beans in and something to catch the beans at the same time. But we still decrease the amount of popcorning that happens. Uh, the Eureka utilizes the fact that we can actually close that hopper so right. we don't get those beans hopping out. But uh, with the E5 SD, uh, they actually limit the diameter of that actual chamber on the top, which also prevents a lot of that popcorning that's going to be happening as well. So, right. And uh, you'll go ahead and see that in action right now. Uh, right. These do include the opal glides on right. this one. so. Uh, very pretty, uh, if we can get a nice close-up shot of that, very pretty Oop. looking burr here. Uh, this is not the same size that you'll find on that SD. Uh, oh, there, there we, we go. go. Uh, very nice sheen. Right. It's, you can see just a steel burr next to it there. And this is going to be the difference of that steel burr as well. So again, this is going to uh, keep for longevity of that burr. Uh, you know, keeping that nice edge, uh, you're really going to be able to dial in a lot of nice coffees with that, uh, even using the most dense, light roast coffees as well. So, so I would right. obviously recommend using your dosing funnel again on that. Toss that in there. But uh, right now, let's, let's go for any more questions. You, do we have anything else, Ellie? Um, yeah, earlier you mentioned RDT. Kay wants to know what that stands for. So RDT stands for Ross Droplet Technique. Uh, it's 
a fancy way of saying spritz your beans before you grind them. Uh, you know, you want like a nice little water bottle that, that'll, you know, I'm going to sneak into Zach's shot here, uh, with a nice little very fine nozzle so that it like really vaporizes the water so if you're not getting like literally drops of water but like a, a, a very fine mist of water onto your beans because that will help break down uh, uh, reten it'll, it'll fight retention and static electricity that is created by grinding. Yep. So it'll uh, keep that uh, closer to zero retention. Basically, right. within coffee grinding, static is not our friend. That's how things are going to get stuck within that chamber right. or it's going to go flying everywhere. So you might even find that within the winter months right now, right. Uh, that it's even more important to do this. Uh, right. Right especially now. Yeah, especially yep. in the winter months, for sure, because of the uh, dry air. Exactly. All right. So Anything else, Ellie, or are we good? All right, let's pull that shot. Let's go ahead. And let's see how this, this one looks. One for one so far. One for one. Let's see how it keeps going. I'm going to go ahead and weigh this out again. Going for those same parameters we had about 18 in. Yep. Going for about 36 out. And we're looking for that first pour. So far, we don't have any uh, rat tailing, so it wasn't too coarse. That looks good. And we, that we have that first initial drop. That looks amazing. Nice golden crema right away. As you can see, we're pulling at about eight bar, which is what I, I set the OPV on this machine to, to pull at. Quite frankly, I just, I find that when pulling at lower pressures, I get a lot better body on, on, the, on my coffee. And when it comes to espresso, like for me, body is really important. And we had about 27 seconds on that extraction. So Beautiful. Uh, pretty similar to that last one. You can still get very similar results between these grinders. Right. Right. Um, as you can tell from that camera view, it looks exactly the same there. <laughs> same really exact does. coffee. Uh, so you can still get quality results with either of these burr designs with either of these single right. dosers so right. far. And we, when we went over that, that was 65 millimeter. These are 64 mil millimeter and, it, and they have the Opal Glide coating on them. So yep. wonderful, wonderful, you know, sturdy machine. Are you going to drink that one or you should know, I do I, all yeah, of them? Yeah, I might stain my mustache on All right, go one. for that yeah. one. Yeah. Mustaches, yeah, let me tell you. Yeah, this is great. You can really start dialing into different flavor profiles with these grinders. Right. Uh, maybe even utilizing a lot of our flow controls within our, right. our other machines as yeah. well. Great, great point. Which right. we could have installed on the 600 here, mm -hmm. uh, opted, opted against it, but for the sake of this video. But we're just gonna, let's move on. Let's move on, perfect. SD. All right, so the E37SD. So now we're getting into the, the big boy burrs here. So 83 millimeter titanium burrs here. And, you know, oftentimes I do these installs at coffee shops. So I'll have a single doser on a back bar for maybe their uh, more expensive coffees, uh, things that they're really trying to, you know, really cut down uh, the retention for that so they're not wasting too much coffee for these higher end coffees. Uh, and they're also storing those a little bit differently, maybe in a freezer as well. And so unlike the, the normal uh, E37S where you have the time dosing, just a simple little push on and off and then you just feed the beans in. I like to do a hot start mm -hmm. on my beans uh, instead of a cold start which is I want the burrs moving before I toss the beans in. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say is the b main benefit of that? I think because these are gravity fed situations, you really want that initial bean to really be fed right away. If you start at that uh, cold start, uh, you might get popcorning. It might just uh, blow out instead of actually getting that uh, initial inertia into the actual uh, burr chamber, which is really nice. Um, and you can actually get a quicker grind that way as well. Uh, so it's actually in that chamber for less time. So less friction, less static being built up. Uh, so less likely to be flying away right. during that time. And I don't know, let, let's, let's see in there. Like, as you can see, we were talking about the other ones. There is really like no boulders at all. Uh, mm. The E37 models, uh, I mean, you're never gonna run into that. It comes out so fluffy, it's sickening. 
So good maybe a, a good difference between these puck preparations is now we don't really need the WDT tool. No, not at uh, all. Maybe we can still get our even bed for right. extractions, That's especially if we're going with bottomless porta filters right. or anything like and that. And with the way that the, the the dosing cups on this on these are shaped, it's, it is a little better to use your dosing funnel, which the dosing funnel does come with the E37SD, if I'm correct. But yeah, correct. Yep. same puck prep on every single one of these. Well, no, that's Actually, not true. No, we were I, just I, saying that. <laughs> I'm, I'm skipping the WDT yeah, skipping tool. The WDT. I want to show right. that we can actually get that same extraction without that now. Right. Uh, so if you want maybe a little bit quicker morning routine, you could find that with an E37 right. SD. That's true. And we'll go into one of the other, one of my other favorite features of the E37 SD very shortly. But do we have any more questions while Zach's pulling that shot? Yeah, um, J-Man wants to know how often should he clean his grinder. J-Man wants to know how often he should clean his grinder. Very valid question. Uh, upkeep of these things is a huge concern of anyone spending this amount of money on a product. Uh, with these, uh, there's a lot of different schools of thought when it comes to cleaning your grinder. Um, you know, cleaning your burrs. So that one was a little fast, but that's okay. 22 seconds. I like that for a crema wave. Yeah. Are you going to do that one? No, you're going to do that. Ah, jeez. I know but you like that lower, lower <laughs> back time. Back to the question. I'm so sorry, <laughs> J-Man. Uh, well, you know, a lot of people will say uh, that you should clean your grinder between every single different kind of coffee you're going to put through it. Like, let's mm -hmm. say I've got a bag of the Tolima, and then I'm going, my next bag is going to be the Guatemala. I'm going to clean it before I switch over to the Guatemala to clean out everything that the, the Tolima left behind, which, you know, with a low retention grinder isn't much but like you're going to still want to get in there, clean the burrs. Uh, if you ever notice any sort of like decrease in performance, uh, opening it up, and, and all three of these are actually really simple to open up and access the burrs. Mm -hmm. um, but just, just look in there and you, you'll be surprised, you know, and just literally take a brush, clean it out and you're good. Yeah, and you'll be able to tell, as you get to know these grinders and use them more often, uh, you'll be able to tell by that time that it actually needs a cleaning that it would, uh, you know, the increase of time that it takes to actually grind something is a huge one, uh, or you're at a different adjustment completely right. on your, your burr setting as well. You're right. finding yourself having to adjust uh, a lot more often. So, right. Yep. I, so, so in, you know, I, I don't think there's a hard and fast rule to how often you should clean it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, you can go as long as you, everything still is working properly. Once mm -hmm. you notice like a decrease, like if you notice it's taking a little bit longer to grind, just open it up and check it out. Yep. Um, yeah. I know techs that do it daily, so. <laughs> right. And just, just an update, you know, because this one was a little faster, a little zippier, as I like to call it, a little brighter. Um, and so, but that's to be expected when you yeah. get a little faster shot. Yeah, but there is no real difference in the actual taste that these burrs are putting off. Yes, there's a, a larger size or a decreased size in the burst size. Right. We can still dial these in virtually to that same profile. Right. So. Yeah. I mean... It's, it's going to taste like crema wave when you're done with it, is, yep. is basically what we're saying. Mm -hmm. um, but let's move on. I, I, we want to brew that hoop because, my goodness, I love the hoop. Mm -hmm. um, so, but let's just go over real quick. With the, the E37 SD, the, it, there's, there's a little screw here that you can, well, it's knurled, and you can remove it. And you can actually disengage the worm gear, which is really useful. Mm -hmm. So now I can make a, a huge change to the grinding without having to keep turning. I think Mark did a study not too long ago where he found that like to get from, what was it? A hundred, a hundred turns, Mark, was it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get from a usable espresso grind size to a usable uh, pour over grind size. And so, but with that, that, it's just that simple. And then you just lock it back in place uh, so that you're nice and sturdy. Uh, we, we took the time to dial this in, so, mm -hmm. you know, but. It's going to be the same process, but you know, for this one, I'm going to use our Ethiopia. Uh, I think it's a, a great coffee for for pour overs, uh, which you know this sort of is. Mm -hmm. But yeah, let's do it. So we'll go ahead and increase that grind size. So going a lot coarser. Right. Uh, you know, you definitely showed how easy it is to change that. So that is a big difference between the single doser uh, E37s. Uh, and the e regular E37S is that ability to really take off that quick, uh, 
quick burr change mint or changer. <laughs> what, what what do they call the, these? The quick set quick, quick set, set burr, burr adjustment. Yeah, quick yeah. set burr adjustment. Right. Um, so that's one of the main things that you'll find within the difference between those uh, grinders. Because I do that get that question a lot. Oh, can I just get a E thirty seven S and use it for single dosing? Um, I mean, you can, but we do decrease, decrease that chamber size for popcorning and that quick adjustment is, is nice. Right. It's very nice to utilize that. All right. And as you find yourself going to a coarser grind, you might find a better retention as well. But potentially more uh, static electricity. Uh, so as you're grinding. You'll see a lot of those flyaways, the chaff kind of flying. Uh, it'll kind of decorate the backboard of your, your yeah. grinder there. But once again, that's that's a beautiful grind. Uh, and I just love the color of the Ethiopia when it's ground. It's a nice like orange color. Uh, so yeah, there you go. That's a good dose. Perfect. And then before that, we're going to go oh. ahead and soak Yeah, pre-wet that filter. I made a video uh, not too long ago, a uh, full review of the hoop. You can check that out uh, on our channel. It might even be in the description. I'm not sure. It <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it'll show you everything you need to know about the hoop. We're going to go for, it's going to be, we're going to be pushing the limits here. About 19 and a half gram dose. 20 grams is about as much as you can do. Uh, so 19 and a half times 15, if I only had a calculator. But we'll, we'll, you it's start pouring, I'll tell you how much it is. 270. 270 plus, all right, what is it? 19. Quick 1 to 15 ratio. <laughs> 19 <laughs> times 15. All right. 285. Let's do 285. 285. Perfect. So, so I'm going to go ahead and start my timer here. Right. And what he's going to do is he's just going to pour to that outer ring. And that whole 285. That to whole 285 here. Right. So All at once. You don't have to pour five different uh, pulses like you might with a V60 or something like that, yeah, which is a popular technique. Yep. Due to that nice radial infusion. So we're getting as little bypass as possible right. through this brute So you want a little well. heavy, and that's fine. Oh. That's just me not paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> but really, that's it. Now we can just wait for that to finish brewing, and we have delicious coffee. Yep. So... But, and it was that simple to switch between an espresso size and a pour over size on this grinder. Uh, and it's, it's lovely. And, you know, it, not to say that it's not, a, you know, easy, but like, you know, this one you can change, it, it goes all the way from one to eight. You can have your settings set for that. This one with the, with the smaller knob, it is a little bit more of a challenge to uh, set, to go from a, a a fine grind size to a coarse grind size because you, you, you'll be turning this maybe three to four times, I think I found. Yeah, sometimes people count the rotations that right. they're kind of going through with those adjustments. But it isn't kind of important to just kind of not pay attention to maybe the numbers on that, but the actual steps that's, that you're that's making very true. That's very when true. dialing in. So, Do we have any more questions? Oh, Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> um, ben would like to know what the significance of a larger burst size is. You want to tackle that one for I us? Can, I can definitely tackle that one. So the main <laughs> difference between that larger burr size is going to be heat transfer. So the amount of friction that's actually being put onto our organic matter, aka our, our beans. Mm -hmm. um, so with friction, uh, you can get a lot of negative effects, including uh, like scorching roasting. So basically, if you have a very particular roast that you're aiming for, uh, if you create more friction on those smaller beans over a longer period of time, uh, you can actually create uh, basically an over-roasted scorching mark to those, yeah, those don't beans do that. as well. You don't want to do that. Uh, you also get less friction due to the faster grind size as well. Uh, right. So less heat transfer onto that bean as well. Less heat transfer, usually mm -hmm. larger, larger burrs means faster grinding uh, yeah. and more, you know, Mark did a great study again, not to shout out Mark again, my goodness, <laughs> but uh, he, he, he did a great study with grind size uh, uh, particle. Par particle analysis. So our particle analysis. <laughs> right, and, and the larger burrs <laughs> typically gave you more uh, of an accurate grind, literally. Yep. Uh, I, I, I just mentioned it in one of my more recent videos that uh, with the E37S, uh, of the set grind size that we were going for, we got 85% of all the grounds that were, in, in, that were ground out were within 100 microns 
of the set grind size, which is just absolutely absurd. Yeah, so a more precise grind, right. more accurate grind right. size throughout that bed. Right. So less, less fines. fines. Right. Yep. Less and fines. less fines cause for over extraction. We don't want that. Right. Things are going to be very inconsistent with that. So right. in turn, you get more consistency with right. larger burrs as and well. And a cleaner cup most, and, most often. Yep. Anything else, Ellie? Nope. Awesome. Nope. Not, not right now? All right. Well, our brew is uh, it's moving along. Uh, what else do we want to mention about these grinders? So I, I want to just mention real quick because, you know, it's, it's something people care about. Each one of these comes, uh, this one comes in three different colors, uh, white, black, and chrome. This one comes in black, white, and like, I, I, I like it. It's actually like a, a, like a sparkly, like almost like glittery. And I think it's really fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the E37 SD comes in black and white. And I, you know, they're all... They, so you can match them with, with other products within your, your kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that you know, they all look great next to the PropTech Pro 600, obviously, because that's a great looking machine. Yeah, yeah, especially with that Eureka having the Chrome option. You right. can match it with a lot of different machines. Mm -hmm. A lot of our machines come in the black and white as well. Um, but I feel like aesthetics are very different between these. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe not so much with between the Chiados, but the Eureka really standing out with that uh, wooden uh, right. base plate on right. there. That is a nice magnetic adjustment, right. uh, nice weight to that actual stand as well. Right, and I feel like that's that's important to note as well. You know, oftentimes on this channel we'll put machines up here with with custom wood accents, and but those are all extras. This is how this this grinder comes with mm -hmm. with the wood accents, and it, you know it's got this great, great hopper lid, and and the little the little platter there. It yeah. is just a lot of fun. Great attention to detail across the board with right. each one of these. Right, uh, which you would expect from these two brands, from Eureka and Chiato. Like you're you're getting quality pr products. They they know what they're doing. Yep. And I'm gonna say we're we're getting close. Uh, this is a little bit longer of a brew, but the the beautiful thing of the the hoop is that. It's going to taste just fine. But we do have a solid stream, so it is brewing. We, we're not dripping. Any other questions, Ellie? Nothing new? All right. So, uh, you know, we also have the, what, what, was the, what was the kettle we used? So we have a fellow Stag EKG Pro over here. Right, that's right. Uh, so it's a little bit of a smarter ke kettle. Uh, we increased our uh, temperature to 202 with this, which was a super nice utilization of maybe getting more of those chlorogenic acids out of that Ethiopian. So After the Ethiopian. Yeah, right. yeah. So we can get a little bit of a sweeter cup. Um, and what's really cool about the hoop is that we can utilize a lot of different kinds of coffees as well. And every little movement that we make with this, whether it's actually uh, agitating the actual right, grounds yeah. within it, also increases our extraction, which you'll see in other videos that we've made on these. But all you really need is that one pour and you get an amazing cup Right. Uh, and oftentimes it does not change that extraction whatsoever uh, right. between that time, right. so it, which the time does uh, vary between those coffees as well. So uh, we've got two hand caps over there. Let's let's grab one of those. Let's go ahead and taste this. We're done. All right. So let, why don't you just get rid of that for me over there? Sounds great. I would normally want to give this a little stir just to combine the the liquid. A little better. But yeah, and we can oxidize that a little bit. Right. The introduction of oxygen for a lot of these light roasts, you. you know, get a little bit sweeter as we introduce that oxygen. Yeah. Yeah. All so right. There you go. So I feel like with single dosing, you can really utilize the fact of a lot of different great coffees. And a lot of great coffees and a lot of different brew styles. Like, that's the idea. When you have, like, a next to zero retention between each one, you can use this for each brew individually, and that's really what the goal is yep. with single dosing. Delicious. Perfect. An amazing cup. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, if we don't have any more questions, I'm willing to uh, say, you know, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, you know, we've got a lot more live streams coming up and, uh, you know, produce videos too. We'll, we'll get back to those eventually. Mm -hmm. Don't you worry. Uh, and we've got the Coffee Cast service. Well, maybe you'd be better at explaining that. Yeah, so Coffee Cast is basically a triple camera setup, much similar to like <laughs> what we're doing right now uh, with those 4K camera setups. It's yeah. a one on one with one of our uh, sales representatives, one of our coffee experts. Uh, you can even get myself with that mm -hmm. on dialing in. Uh, you know, maybe you're confused about a machine and you want to see the main differences between a, a couple of them, or right. you just need to dial in what you have. Right. Uh, we, we're there to help at, at uh, any Pretty time. much every product we carry, yep. you, can, you can have a demo of it and mm -hmm. we'll talk you through it. 
Uh, also, check out the website for more detailed content on any of these products. We, you know, we've got you know burr size, like voltage, you know, actual scale size of each one of these it, it, in case you need to fit it under a cabinet or something like that. So very important details over there. And, uh, you know, check the description for other relevant videos about mm -hmm. all these products and, you know, general techniques as well. Especially on that Chiado Hoop as well. The so. Chiado Hoop, a great, yep. great product, mm -hmm. let me tell you. I can't get enough of it. Yep. So I, I'm going to, you know what, one more check? No. Nothing? Oh, okay. Okay. I, uh, I thought maybe you were holding out on me, Ellie. <laughs> uh, but nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we'll be back in a little bit with uh, an, another one. Actually, you might see me again. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, say goodbye for now. But uh, thanks for watching, and check back soon for more of the best on Everything Coffee.